Good morning. This will be intro video for... I've done interviews with several people, so I'm going to split them up into part one, part two, part three, the same as I did last year for the 2017 Hanvention. Uh, uh, this is Jason. Um, I'm KC5HWB. This is Ham Radio 2.0 from the Xenia Fairgrounds. In, 20, in May of 2018. So these two interviews coming up are going to be from Yezu about their new FTDX 101D HF rig that is about to drop. And also from uh, Buddy Pole. Buddy Pole's got some new products uh, for the field. New solar controllers and chargers. A couple of new antenna masts and some new uh, systems for putting up a dipole antenna. So we're going to hear from them now. And I hope you enjoy the episode. All right, everyone's always taller than me in this video, so <laughs> I'm always the short one. But okay, I'm here with John N9UPC from Yezu, and this is the new FTDX 101D, which is on display, but I can't touch it. You can't touch it. We got it <laughs> under lock and key. <laughs> okay. Uh, 101. Okay, I got a 101 double E at home. That's mm -hmm. from way back in the day, yep. right? So it's it comes with the. It can, I've got the VFOB. An external speaker and the amp for the 600 watt amp, mm -hmm. 1200 B, I think it is. And I'm gonna get. There's a guy who does restorations. I'm gonna get all that done. So why are we going back to the 101? Is there a story behind that or no? Yeah, there actually is. Okay. Uh, you know, the 101 was obviously one of our our, our high quality radios. Right. It was it was really a flagship model for uh, Yezu. Mm -hmm. And when we looked at introducing this radio, it's always the high quality, the the uh, the, the technology we put into it. And we feel that this is such a great radio. This is going to revive the the HF line, the SDR market that we're entering into right now. Mm -hmm. That brings Bringing back the 101 model number was the important and the right mm -hmm. step to do, yep. and that's why it's part of the FTDX, part of our mm -hmm. current HF line, and the 101 DD, meaning the um, SDR factor. SDR factor. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Is it touchscreen? It is touchscreen, yep. seven inches. That is. Yeah. Okay. Now you guys have one. What, what's the? Is it? Um, I'm not familiar with all the HF model numbers, but there's an FTDX 1200. Yep. Is that the biggest one that you have before this one? No, actually, the FTDX 5000, 5000. is our top of line. has the has the dual VFOs on that one. A lot of customers really like that one because mm -hmm. of some of those features mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to make customers understand and people where we're not replacing any radio with this. So this Th is new. This is new. This is adding to our already extensive great line of HF radios. And with Good. this radio, it really kind of complements those that wish to take part of S. SDR and those that actually want to explore the, the, the advantages of SDR and have a great HF radio with the name Yezu on it, mm -hmm. they can now take advantage of it. Good. Awesome. Okay. So what are some of the, um, some of the stuff's a little bit over my head, but like what are some of the specifics of the back end, like what kind of uh, receiver sensitivity and that kind of stuff? You know, we don't have any of those specs left okay. uh, yet, just yet. Um, and as a matter of fact, it's kind of interesting. We just did a worldwide release of this actually Friday okay. morning, right before the show. Um, it went out worldwide, it went out you know, through the North America, USA market, and we wanted to get this out here to show that yes, we've been working on something for a while, we weren't gonna rush ourselves to the market because we want high quality, mm -hmm. and by going ahead and releasing this for Hamvention, Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it kind of shows that we're there. We'll have more pricing and availability along with specs in the next couple months. We're looking probably availability around, I would say, probably like uh, September around September. there. September. End, end of summer, beginning of uh, the fall. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i probably take a picture of the back here because everybody's always wanting pictures of the back. So does it take... Okay, so there's... Two antennas and one receive antenna. That's correct. Yep. Okay. Um, we did kind of do that diversified antenna system as we have on our other rigs okay. uh, right there. So it allows you to, you know, especially with the SDR abilities, now you can put one that's specifically for receive mm -hmm. for pulling it out. And with the extra two antenna ports on there, it's going to let you put your favorite antennas on there. You sure. Know, we have a lot of customers always come in saying, hey, I, I, I want one beam and I want, you know, a nice dipole or mm -hmm. something that they mm -hmm. have. Yeah. Hey, we are allowing that right in the radio itself. Perfect. Okay. Okay. And it'll do H, all of HF, of course, in six meters. That is correct. HF to six meters, it's 100 watts. Mm -hmm. um, it does take, and some people ask, well, is it an internal power supply? No, it is an external power supply. Oh, it's, really? Yeah. Okay. Yep, so, so on there, it will take your, your standard, okay. you know, 12 volts. Tw the 12 um, volt, there. okay. Yep. And then, you know, some of the other features that, you know, they'll see on the back is, is we actually have a DVI out for if you want to directly I, connect I a monitor that. to it. Uh, we do have a USB uh, cable input there. Mm -hmm. We do, as you can see there, we also have the DB9 CAT um, mm -hmm. jack on there. A lot of customers 
customers still like to have that functionality features in there, as well as a lot of other things, such as two RF um, outputs on the back. So if you want to have a, have a different device connected to it, such as like an external SDR or something okay. like that on there, we, we do offer those features just like we do on our 5000, 3000 line. Okay. And uh, internal, external tuner? Uh, none, none right now. It is okay. it is an external tuner if you would need it on but, there. Right but now. there's a port in the back. For there it. is a port. Okay. Yes, we we continue the ports with the tuner, the data jacks, so mm -hmm. everything that pretty much our other rigs have. We have it okay. in here now too. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Well, I look forward to hearing more about it as the days, uh, as the months go by. We should say, um, by September, you know, hopefully, you know. You know how radio release dates work, right? Exactly. They're very fluid. It, it can be. Yes, it can be. But so. uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get this out definitely. And then as more information comes along, we'll post it on our website, sure. social media, that kind of thing, get it out to customers because we know a Perfect. lot of people have questions. Perfect. Okay, good. Thanks for taking the time out. I know you guys are going to have a busy day today. It's Saturday and yes, I want to catch you before the doors officially open. So, all well, right, Thanks for man. stopping by. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Appreciate Take it very care. much. All right, new product from Buddy Pole. What are you calling this? Uh, this is actually... You're good. There we go. <laughs> uh, this is actually our sister company, uh, Mastworks, okay. which is the new rotational uh, tripod and mast systems. And it comes in three different heights or extendable heights. This is the biggest one, which is 33 feet. Correct. So okay. initially we'll have the three different sizes, and uh, one will be... Uh, about 10 feet, and that's a 24-inch tripod and mast. That's designed to go with our um, our smaller packages for travel. And then we'll have one that uh, goes up 7 meters, about 24 feet. Mm -hmm. And then the last one will be this one, and this goes up to about 33 feet. Wow. This definitely uh, looks well made and these these look they, they look plastic to me at first but they're not no nope, this is all <laughs> custom extrusion uh -huh. we have a, a design patent application on the shape of this extrusion here so it is not round um, and oh, this no, allows us to have a keyed mast mm -hmm. um, so there's no rotational force on, on our collar locks and these struts oh. are a custom aluminum extrusion as well so it's that, all all custom here. All very custom work done. The parts, okay. the hardware are done from injection molds. Uh, this is fiberglass reinforced nylon, and in most cases, it's stronger than aluminum of the same thickness. So, um, really tough stuff. They make manhole covers out of this material. Oh, um, it's okay. not going to crack. It's not going <laughs> to break. So. Okay, so tell us about, the, the coolest part is the rotator in my opinion, so tell us about that. Right, so we have a worm gear system that's internal in this head. It's extremely lightweight, very simple. Um, we have, initially we have a hand crank here, and honestly you can, you can do this with your pinky. <laughs> um, it takes no force at all. I mean, even when I have a, a much larger antenna on top, um, it's no force at all to, to turn that. When you stop, it is locked into position. It does not move. Because so, this is not round. This is right. like a, this is like a almost like a triangle shape. Exactly. Yeah, and those yeah. gears, the worm gears, they're in position and they will not move on themselves. So Okay, good. Cool. You want to put it up? Sure. Okay. Yeah, Here, I'll, I'll have to hand I'll, you the mic. Yeah, yeah that's that. fine. I got it. Um, so we just have our, our standard buddy pole on top here. It's not set for any particular band at the moment, but um, so with our lever locks, we just open those up. Um, happens uh, pretty much instantaneously. We come up until we hit a stop here. Okay. And I'll do that for the next section. And we don't have these. Uh, <laughs> we don't have it anchored here. <laughs> we have articulating feet there um, with uh, holes for stakes. So normally we'd stake this down. The next section there. So we might stop. Here. Yeah, we might stop there. <laughs> wow. So. Demonstration. Yeah. yeah, on asphalt. Yeah, so maybe we didn't yeah. think this thing through very. <laughs> we got one more section. Yeah. You know. So yeah, we'd have uh, several sets of guys. It's uh, yo, uh, yeah, yeah. It's here. it's out of the camera now. Anyway, no. I'll uh, I'll let you hold it for a second, and then I'll get a, a zoom back shot. I'll bring that back down now. So. Do you want me to leave it up there? For yeah, leave it up. Leave it up there for one second, if you don't mind. And let me, uh, let me, let me turn the camera. So here's how, here's how tall it is, right now. And that's not even up all the way. There it is, right there. No, I can put it up higher. Oh yeah. Well, no, you don't have to. It's okay. I mean, we don't want it to fall, obviously, but. Uh, 
that's with uh, two more sections. Yeah, you've got go two there. more sections on top of that. What do you think that's like? 15, no, 17? No, that's going to be uh, about 24 Is that, feet there. That's 24 right there? Okay, right. there you go. Yep. Awesome. Cool, man. Uh, <laughs> so I'll bring that back down. Yeah, you can bring it back down. Let me hold your mic for you. I'll, I'll come get it. Coming down is probably a lot easier, right? <laughs> there you go. And you're going to eventually, maybe later this year, I think, have a motorized option for this. Right. So that's already so something we've been working with. Since it's so easy to, to since it's so easy to turn already, what's the what's the purpose of the motorized option? It's remote, right? You can Right. Okay, it's got a remote control so you can Correct. So okay. um, a small motor, planetary gear motor, goes on here. Okay. And that uh, quarter turn, just like we do with the hand crank, it's locked in position just below it. And we'll have an uh, uh, electronic compass, a uh, magnetic compass here okay. that clips onto the mast. And that's uh, feeding information um, about the antenna's position. And you're reading that from a, a device, small device with an OLED display. Uh, that'll, that'll tell us the, the bearing, and then we can change um, the azimuth from there. So you can punch in um, 240 degrees, and okay. it's going to turn to that bearing. So. Oh, great. That's pretty cool. What do you think the range on that remote will be? Uh, initially, it'll be tethered, and then uh, at some point we'll have a wireless version. Okay, so. okay. All right, good deal. Right. Cool, man. Okay, so Chris will be at Hamcom next month, which is three weekends from now. So when I post this video up uh, next uh, next week, I'll post it up next week. I'll send you the link when I do. So expect all you folks at Hamcom to come see him because <laughs> this is some cool yeah, we'll stuff, man. we'll have all man. three sizes on display there, and um, you can walk up and turn it. I hope to have a an open area where people can walk around and and just look at the engineering and uh, we've had this in, in development for several years now so. yeah I know you've been talking about it for a while cool man okay well thanks for uh, thanks for the dem demonstration I'm glad we got uh, at least there's no precipitation coming down on yeah. us right now <laughs> <laughs> Last so, day of the show we're right still yeah hanging yeah in there, still, still hanging in there all right man I appreciate it you okay. need to help carry anything back this episode of Ham Radio 2.0 is brought to you by the Greater Houston Ham Fest, one of Texas's largest Ham Fest shows, which takes place each year in March. For schedules and registration information, visit their website at www.houstonhamfest.org.